Hello everybody, uh, my name is Lino Tadros and this video is about how to set up Elma, which is a logging mechanism with Sitefinity. So let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't heard about Elma before, uh, it stands for Error Logging Modules and Handler. That's why E-L-M-A-H Elma is known for. It's an implementation by Microsoft. Uh, you can read that about it on the Microsoft website. That's the logging application block. Uh, the enterprise library itself coming from Microsoft, the logging application block, it simplifies the implementation of common logging functions. You can use logging application blocks to write information, for instance, to a variety of locations. You can write it to a file, which Sitefinity does already out of the box. You can write it to an event log. You can put it in an email message. You can put it in a database, a message queue. You can use what we call uh, WMI, which is the Windows Management Instrumentation as an event. Also, you can implement your own custom locations using application block extension points. Out of all of those, the one built into Sitefinity itself is based on a text file that gets created in your app underscore data. And it has been like this for a long, long time. Let me go ahead and show you what could possibly uh, be uh, maybe not preferred doing it this way inside of Sitefinity. All right, as you can see here, this is a Sitefinity. It's a 15.1 version of a website in Sitefinity. It could be any version, really. Um, and you will notice if I go to the app underscore data folder in here, uh, you will not see the Sitefinity folder because uh, it's not included in the project by default. So I'm going to click in Visual Studio in the Solution Explorer on the button that says Show All Files. And you'll notice Sitefinity will show up. Let's open this up. And this is where you have all your configuration files, uh, temp, license, and I'm interested in the logs. If you open up the logs in here, you'll notice a few files. Uh, the trace.log, the upgrade trace, if you upgrade it from one version to the other. There might be an error.log. I didn't cause an error yet. We will do that soon. But notice if I double click, for instance, the trace.log, there will be a lot of information. I can format it based on whatever I want. And there will be a lot of information in here that I can see what got logged or being traced. It doesn't have to be an error. It's just things that happened. Maybe you restarted the system. Maybe you installed the new modules, stuff like that, that would be traced in the system itself. This is great. But now I'm going to show you pretty much two problems that could occur because of the implementation of the error logging based on a file. The first one is what happens if the Sitefinity site is running, okay? Of course, once it's writes something to the trace.log during the run, it locks the files. That means if something happens in production, I want to find out what the error was or what the trace was. You can't open that file unless you bring down the entire system. So I have to shut down IIS, for instance, to be able to open one of those. And that might not be something you want to do for a production system. The uh, other issue, of course, that can come up is that if this is load balanced, maybe you have three or four different instances of the website and they can piggyback on each other using load balancing, you're not guaranteed that the tracing and the logs for the errors, for instance, will happen on all of them. Might Sometimes you have to wait five minutes, sometimes an hour. Believe it or not, you can end up waiting 12 hours to 24 hours for all the other to sync with this. It all depends, of course, on the configuration of your load balancer. So I might actually have an error on one, but doesn't show up in anywhere else. And it becomes problematic to be able to debug uh, all of that type of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Let's go ahead and click on run and it will start the app. All right, I ran the site. Let me bring it up to this window in here, this screen so you can see it. There is a site running. Okay, I'm not going to shut it down. I'm going to keep it running. I'm just going to move it to another monitor. But now while the site is running, let's say, for instance, I would like to debug it. Let's say this is in production, for instance. Whether this is an error.log or a trace.log, look what happens when I double click on it to be able to see what the problem is. It won't open it. It will say that the file cannot be opened because another user have it locked, which in our case, IIS is running and having a hold on this file. And it could be a problem. Can you imagine every time you get an error that you'd like to debug, whether in QA or mainly in production, you have to shut down IIS to be able to get a hold back of your log files? That will not be a good idea. Alrighty. My preference, to be honest with you, is to use a database. So you can use referential and integrity on the database itself. It will not be locked. 
and it will give you a very nice way of being able as an administrator not everybody will have access to it to go on a web page on your website to be able to see what tracing what errors what type and see the entire stack actually of the uh, what could cause the problem so we can actually have a better idea without having to shut down the app itself so that is elma which we're going to use the same exact enterprise library that uh, Cyfinity is using to write to a file but we're going to use it this time to write to a SQL Server database instead and that would be great whether you have a load balance system or you also have uh, this running an IS in production for instance both of them would be great for that there are a couple of steps that you have to do so bear with me here we're going to do one by one the first thing I wanted to show you uh, which is good also for you to, to, to do is to open up the web.config file go all the way to the top and look for something called Elma Alrighty, I'm going to look for Elma and you will notice there are no Elmas in here and it's on purpose that I did that to find out that once you install a NuGet packages for Elma for instance there is a lot of things that are going to be added to your web.config file but before you do anything make sure you don't have any references or any mention of Elma at all in your web.config file. All right, great. Let's go ahead and start the, uh, the surgery. The first thing is I'm going to install a couple of uh, NuGet packages from Microsoft regarding the Elma implementation. So I'm going to right click on my project and we'll go in here to manage NuGet packages. And I am going to go browse over here. We're not going to do it from Sitefinity. We're going to do it from the NuGet.org, which is the regular one from Microsoft. And I'm going to look for something called Elma. And uh, we'll wait for that to load. There it is. There is 12.6 million downloads already. There is the Elma. So uh, be careful because with Sitefinity, you have to have 1.22. So if you have a newer version, uh, of course, there are. But earlier version will not work with Sitefinity. I'm using Sitefinity 15.1, but as a matter of fact, for the last several versions of Sitefinity, they all require 1.22. So this is the first part that I'm going to need. The other one I'm going to need is the Elma SQL Server implementation because you can have Elma with MySQL, with Oracle, with whatever you want, but I'm going to use it with SQL Server. The good news, if I install Elma SQL Server, which is 1.20, which is totally okay with that, uh, it will also install the Elma, uh, but I want to make sure to install it myself, the Elma, because I want to make sure if there is a newer version, it does not get installed automatically as the tip revision, because otherwise there is a possibility it might not work with Sidefinity. So I'm going to click on Elma in here and we'll say install. Give it a few seconds, it should come back and say Elma was installed successfully. All right, we're good. All right, there it is, resolving. Okay, we'll say yes, install all these. And hopefully we'll come back once we'll he successfully installed Elma 122. And there is one more that I will need probably. Oh, and by the way, when you installed Elma, all of that stuff, it actually uh, goes and creates a folder called app underscore readme right there. You see that? And if you open it up, there will be an Elma.txt that has this information in it as well to explain about uh, the different securing error packages and so on and so forth. I'm not going to care about that for right now. I'm interested in getting the Elma SQL Server as well. And it needs to be 120. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. It will uh, run this code and it will give me the installation. What is it going to do? We'll say apply. And now notice it, it adds a couple of more things as well. There is an Elma SQL Server.txt. Let's open this up to see what it says. Run the Elma SQL Server. Uh, SQL script against your database. Edit your web.config with the correct settings in the Elma connection string. So it's giving you exactly all the steps. So you don't have to figure it out. This app underscore readme will tell you exactly what needs to be done. And there is my SQL in here. If I click on it, you will get a lot, but again, you will just have to copy and paste it, but the entire uh, file for all the SQL that uh, will need to be created on your database itself. So let's go ahead and do that. But please allow me, before I run the SQL, I want to go back to the web.config file one more time, and this time I'm going to look for Elma one more time. So we'll say, we should enter. Notice it added a new section group called Elma, letting us know that there will be four new sections being added for the section group. We'll have a security for Elma, error log, error mail, and error filter. And by the way, out of experience, always make sure the error filter is the last one at the bottom. If you move the error filter anywhere else on top of that, it might cause problem, you might not see it. So you always have the error filter at the bottom of the section group every time. Let's keep going. We're pushing F3 in here to see what else is available for Elma. 
Notice the HTTP module have already installed an error log, error mail, error filter. Again, error filter has to be the last one at the bottom, which actually the installation of the NuGet package will do a pretty good job with it. Let's keep going and let's see what else got installed. That is also in the module section underneath the system web server. It will add the error log in here for the error log module uh, and the precondition for it will be manager managed handler, which I don't have to do anything that is correct. And let's keep going all the way till the end in here. Notice there is a new section in here called Elma by itself and in here we'll have the error log coming in from it's using SQL it's not using anything else other than SQL and this is usually somewhere in here we will be able to put the connection string for the database I believe it's uh, later on let's go down to find out where that is all of this has been uh, done for me automatically and that is the end and notice there is a connection string for that this is add name it's called elma-sql server that is the connection uh, string that has a data source and the only thing you have to do is to actually uh, change these uh, data sources user id and password to uh, and the catalog of course to whatever you created in your own database as well but these are the things that you have to really be worried about um, make sure that they got installed correctly in your web.config file and the nuget package will do a pretty good job with that as well all right let's go ahead and open up microsoft sql server management studio i have it open in here let me uh bring it in here i'm going to go ahead and create a new database we'll say right click new database and we can give it whatever name we want i'm going to call it uh, sf elma all righty and we push enter on that and there is my sf elma in here i'm going to right click on this sf elma we'll say new query and now uh, let me go ahead now to visual studio the file got created for us automatically i just needed to run a query on that i'm going to move it a little bit there it is and let's see where we are i don't need to bring the comments or anything like that i'm just going to start from this declare and we'll go down all the way to the bottom and we'll bring it down all the way down like that and we'll say shift all right we'll say Control c on all of this and we'll bring it back to our favorite studio uh, management studio and i'm going to be pasting the code in here all right just make sure you're running this on sf alma that the database we just created we'll say execute and it's done it's completion done so now if i open up the elma and go to tables for instance you will notice that there is the elma error table got created everything was correct i can right click on it and we'll say of course there will be nothing in it we didn't use it yet but at least i can see the schema and notice these are all the different columns that got created with the correct types and everything so we are in a pretty good shape and ready to go all right the last step let me close this uh, sql all right we don't need it anymore and i want to go back to the web.config file and i'd like to change my data sources and the user id and all that so in here the data source that's the name of machine i'm using sql express dot for my local host backslash and i think i call it sql 2022 that's the name of my sql express instance and instead of having a user id and password maybe the best thing to do is to just pass in the integrated security equal to true so i don't have to use that and the name of the catalog you remember what we called it sf elma right that's it everything else stays the same let's go ahead and say Control s to save this file and we are good to go i'm going to close all the stuff down we still have might have a couple of problems i'm going to explain them in a second but for right now you will have to compile the entire system we'll say build the siphonity uh, site and once the uh, the at the bottom it says uh, build succeeded i would go ahead and run it but again so far we didn't tell siphonity that i'm no longer interested in, in running uh, the logs based on files there is a way for us to go and tell it i want to use elma instead of using files for right now i made all the changes but siphonity doesn't know so we'll do that in a second we'll go ahead and run the site i wanted to show you the problem that i said will happen so once you run the site, you'll get an error, uh, HTTP error 500.19 internal server error. And if you take a look at the problem in here, it doesn't like the fact that there is something called validate integrated mode configuration uh, is being um, already defined. You cannot have it multiple times in your config file. And this is something we have to live with. The NuGet package doesn't know anything about Sitefinity. And Sitefinity already had one of those inside of your web.server uh, or web server 
on the configuration itself of the web.config. So you can have an, you cannot have another one. So I'm going to say Control C, take that line that says validation integrated mode configuration, and let's go back and see where this guy occurs. So I'm going to say Control F, and I'm going to be pasting that one in here. Let me take that space out as well perfect so that is the first one see on line 93 all right there is a system that web server that has this validation integration mode configuration if i push f3 in here you will notice on line 230 the one that has the error logs for the modules and everything already have this guy in it as well so one of them has to go you get to choose which one really but you cannot have the validation on both so i'm going to choose this one to make it go away and just to save you time as well, it has to be set to false. So I'm going to go back to the 90 something. This guy, uh, otherwise, actually, the, the building and the running of the site will not like it. So we need to turn off the, uh, the validation for the mode configuration for the validation. So I'm going to say here false and we'll say save this guy and save all. We'll turn this off, right click, build, and let's go ahead and run it one more time and see if this time it will work just fine for us. There you go. All right, it finished compiling. Let me bring it into this screen. And I need, first of all, to go to the back end. We'll say slash sitefinity. And I will log in with lino at foo.com. All righty. And what we need to do right now is to go to the administration, click on the settings. I need to go to the advanced settings of Sitefinity. And I need to find out where can I actually change the logging from being file-based to being um, database based. So I'm going to click on advanced in here for a second. We're going to go down until we see something called uh, system. There is a system, see that? And if you go down, notice there is something called UI Elma config. So I'm gonna click on the UI Elma config. And right now, if this is not checked, everything is going through the file system. That's why the app underscore data, sitefinity, logs, this is where all the files will go. Once you turn this guy on and say, save the changes, now all the logging will change automatically to go from being file-based to database-based, which I personally like a lot more than file base so once you do that hopefully our connection string is correctly and now whenever something happens in the system i will get it directly in the database not in the files whatsoever so let's go ahead and go back to dashboard for instance in here um, and let's open up uh, let's take this local host in here and let's say i would like to go ahead and see exactly uh, what the database has for us. So how do you get there? The way to get there, go to your URL, whatever your website is running, and we'll say elma.axd. That's the name of the resource that will show you the content from the database. If I push enter there, notice I will be able to see now there are no errors right now. If there were errors, I would be able to download the logs. I will actually be able to see the, uh, make it available on a different website as an RSS feed or an SS digest of what's going on. So let's go ahead and cause a problem because I like causing problems, right? So let's say for instance, I have a, a missing page, like a 404, we'll say blah, 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 dot ASPX, which I know does not exist on my website. So if I click on this guy, try to visit it, notice I get the server error. If I didn't have Elma, if I go back into Sitefinity, there would be a file called error.log that will contain the stack of what happened, why this file was not available. But now I cannot open that error.log file um, because Sitefinity is running, okay? It's in production, for instance. But if I go back in here, let me go ahead and do it again. We'll say control V and we'll say elma.axd and we'll click on this guy. Notice there is a, the name of my machine, by the way, is called Lino Desktop. The code is 404, is of type HTTP, which says the file blah blah that ESP does not exist. I can open up the details. And it's a lot more than what I got automatically uh, from just the, the window that came up. So as an administrator, by the way, your customers, people visiting the site, cannot go to elma.axd. You have to be an administrator. So if I actually log out from the back end and try to go to the elma.axd, you're going to get an error saying you do not have permissions to see that. Uh, of course, we don't want people to see because sometimes you'll have connection string information. You don't want to do that. Only the administrators. But it will give you the exception of what happened. You were trying to visit blah, blah, the SPX, which does not exist. But it will also take a snapshot of all your server variables, everything in here with the cookies and 
the browser and the user agent, everything will be available for you to do that. Wouldn't that be nice, for instance, if you've written uh, a widget inside of Cyfinity and you cause a crash? Maybe you did something to, to, to do something bad in the Cyfinity site using a widget or something like that. And while the Cyfinity is running, I can go to the elma.axd and be able to see my internal error, which is 500, and be able to see the stack and see the line of code, for instance. That would be much easier um, instead of having to open a file and have to shut down your server and so on and so forth. So it can definitely be very, very useful. All right, the last thing I want to do before I let you go is to cause a real exception. And this is something simple you can do just to, to, uh, to try it out. Just right click on the projects and we'll say we'd like to add, say a new item. And it doesn't have to be something specific to Cyfinity to be honest with you, we'll say web form. And let's take a, a regular web form in here. We'll call it for instance, uh, test crash. <laughs> we'll test the crash for ASPX. Let's go ahead and create this. And once this file gets created in my project in here, I'm going to open up the code behind for it. And we'll do something very simple. We'll say throw new. And we'll say exception. There you go. Copilot is very nice to us. We'll, we'll throw an exception. So this is a test exception. This is a kaboom <laughs> exception. Okay. So we will do it this way. We'll say save this guy. We can close all of these, compile and run again. And we'll right click and we'll say build so we can make sure that the test crash has taken place as well and that will actually end up causing an internal server error 500 this is not a 404 like it could not find and of course you can actually have all your errors maybe 401s 402 403 500 501 502 all of them you can definitely have inside of that specific file uh, or the axd for the database itself Excellent. Let's go ahead and run it and see if we can see what happens now. All right, let's go ahead and test it. And the way to test it, you just have to go to the page, which is testcrash.aspx inside of our Cyfinity application. And if we go to that page, let's see if we can get a kaboom. <laughs> it's uh, compiling the page for the first time. And there you go. It says, this is a kaboom exception, throw a new exception, blah, blah, blah. And you get some information in here as well, of course, because I have this turned on as enabled. Of course, uh, your customers, uh, um, the admin customers will not get all that information. We'll just say this is a kaboom exception that occurred and that's about it. All right, now let's go back to our Elma. Let's say Elma, Elma.exd again. And let's see. Oh, there you go. Now, this time we have an exception. There is a 500 HTTP exception happens and my own exception that this is a Kaboom exception as well. And remember, the site is still running, which is definitely a great thing. I don't have to shut down IIS or IS Express or Kestrel or anything like that. So now if I click on this detail for the exception 500, I can see exactly what the stack is and I can read all my server variables that happen exactly with the cookies and everything. It makes it much, much easier to debug and being able to fix it on the R&D side right away. So I definitely do recommend for you to actually try to use Elma uh, with the database. You don't have to worry about the... Uh, the load balancing situation or files being locked, the database will be great. And remember, if I log out, if I go back in here and I'll say um, log out for, oops, sorry, not, not the preferences. I just want to log out. We'll say log out from there. If I go back to this page and I'll say refresh this, uh, notice I will not get the, uh, the Elma. It will just give me exactly what the a current user will get as well. Only if you're the admin, you will be able to see all this information in here otherwise you do not have the right to see this information only admin will i hope you enjoyed the video i know it took maybe 15 20 minutes to show you exactly how to set it up and how to use it and why it's uh, it's useful for you and i'll see you again in a future video from the lino tv and the training boss thank you